After years of watching sci-fi movies do it, we're finally searching for life on the red planet. Hi, I'm Rebecca Brayton and welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be shedding some light on the Phoenix Mars mission. Tell us about the Mars mission. The Mars mission is really something that's very unique right now in exploration of the planets. Uh, first off, it's an international mission. Uh, the Phoenix lander, which landed end of May of this year, uh, is, is unique because it's landed in the far north of Mars. This is the first time we're actually exploring the northern Arctic region of another planet. It's a really neat mission because it's going to be looking for water, uh, and that's really the mantra of uh, NASA's exploration of the red planet, is looking looking for water because we think water is a key ingredient for life. How did they finally manage to get there? This mission has been on the works for over five years and it took over 10 months for the probe to actually arrive at Mars. And the, the last nine minutes, which where it enters the atmosphere of Mars and lands, is the most nail-biting time for the team, the mission team, because uh, there's been so many failures. Tell us about the red planet, about Mars. Mars is really a, a planet of extremes and I'd say probably it's going to be a key destination for any extreme sport level. It has the largest mountain in the solar system, Mount Olympus, three times higher than Mount Everest. It has the largest canyon system that would span the entire North American continent. It's three times deeper than the Grand Canyon. It's just got huge amounts of craters, it's got deserts. It's a very inhospitable world though because the average temperature during the daytime is minus 80 degrees Celsius, goes down to minus 150 degrees at nighttime, and sandstorms can kick up to 150 kilometer per hour winds. Can studying Mars tell us anything about Earth? This is going to help us understand the climate change that we're experiencing here on Earth. So by looking at other dynamic weather systems on other worlds, and Mars is the most Earth-like, it'll help us uh, basically better the computer models that we use to, to track everything, to understand things like the hur hurricanes, like Hurricane Katrina. Have there been any discoveries yet? when Phoenix had landed, the thrusters that helped it touch down so gently basically brushed away the topsoil and exposed fresh ice, water ice. And that was like the most amazing thing. And of course, the robotic arm that's attached to the lander has been scraping up this ice and analyzing it. What is the future for humans on Mars? Right now, NASA has a plan, a long-term plan, of sending humans to Mars by the year 2030. And a key component uh, uh, is, uh, is bringing resources. And now that we found water on Mars, this is going to alleviate a lot of problems. Water, of course, can be used to not just make, say, greenhouses, make food for us and drink, drink the water, but also to make rocket propellant. That's a key ingredient for making uh, fuel for rockets, which would allow them to, to come back home. Humans will probably land within the next few decades on the, on the red planet. Wow. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>